everybody, today we are going to be reading Molly and the Falcon. A sudden gust of wind cruised down the pine tree that covered the steep hillside. It circled a little around a little white home with blue shutters, and then it swirled the dark hair of a fourteen-year-old girl named Molly. She was standing in the backyard of her new home, admiring the pink and orange hues of the sunset. Hues, hues, you. Admiring the pink and orange hues of the sun. Suddenly, there was a loud clattering, and Molly whirled around. The sound had come from the shed in the yard, but she didn't see anything. Then something thumped against the shed wall, and Molly was sure that she saw a flash of white go past the shed window. As fast as her as her legs could carry her, Molly flew into the house and slammed and locked the door. She lived with her father, father in the cozy little rental home. They had only been there for a week, for one week. This was the first time Dad had left Molly alone at home while he went into the tiny town for some groceries. Breathing hard, Molly went to the dining room window and peeked through the curtains. The shed looked still and quiet. Faster, please. Faster, please. She continued to watch and saw another sudden flash of white again through the shed window. After a moment, she heard her dad's truck rolling up the tree-lined avenue to her house. Phil said, "Molly, out aloud." She ran to the front door so quickly that she tripped over the rug and bruised her knee. She didn't even notice the pain because her mind was on what might be in the shed. <laughs> Dad, there's something or someone in my shed. Molly cried from the front porch. Stay in the house, Molly," he said seriously. Through the window, Molly watched her dad walk around to the backyard and toward the shed. Another clattering made him pause a mi- a moment between before continuing. Carefully, he peered through the partially open shed door. Molly realized she was holding her breath as her dad stood totally still, letting his eyes adjust to the dark shed. Then he turned to the house with a smile on his face and motioned for Molly to come. Molly let out her breath and wondered what he could possibly have found. She hurried out the back door towards him. It's a bird of prey, Dad. It's a bird of prey, Dad said. A hawk or a falcon, I think. But I really have no clue when it comes to bird species. We can peek inside, but stay behind me. Molly didn't argue. As she took a step into the shed, she saw a few tools on the on a shelf and an old green wheelbarrow, but nothing else. Then Dad guided her eyes with his finger to a far corner. A large bird was standing still as a statue, watching them with huge, well, yellow-winged black eyes. It held one wing out oddly.
the tree, Molly said. Her voice frightened the bird, and it tried to fly, but only made it to a nearby shelf. Dad shut the shed door. Molly noticed that it was already beginning to get dark out. What are we going to do? Molly asked. Dad rubbed his chin and thought. Well, for tonight, let's keep the shed door shut and do some research. Then, hopefully, we can get it some help first thing tomorrow morning. Why are we keeping the door shut? Molly asked. To keep the bird warmer and protect it from any wild animals that might come into the shed at night. Molly nodded in understanding. We could feed it some juicy blueberries I picked up at the store today, Dad said. Or do you think it would prefer grapes? It's a bird of prey, Dad, Molly said with a grin. They eat small animals, not fruit. Oh yes, I'm sure you're right. I didn't get any small animals at the store, said Dad said with a laugh. I didn't know we'd have a bird of prey to rescue. Molly and her dad watched the bird through the shed window for at least another half hour. Molly especially was fascinated by the majestic animal, sitting up straight with its curved beak and its breast poking out. She studied it in the dim light until it got too dark to see any more. Then she and her dad walked back to the house. What would happen to the bird? Molly thought about this question as she gazed out her bedroom window at the star-filled sky for a long time before she fell asleep. When she woke up in the morning, her first thought was of the injured bird in their shed. She hurried and got dressed and pulled on her shoes. Let's go see our bird of prey, Dad, she called as she ran down the stairs. It was a pleasant Saturday morning. Molly had opened the shed door just enough to slip inside and watch the bird of prey. Her quiet, gentle voice seemed to calm the bird. It stopped trying to get away from her and became curious, watching Molly with unblinking eyes. Molly watched the bird with equal interest, admiring its strength, its beauty, the, the curve of its beak, and the length of its talons. Molly's dad had been in the house making phone calls, and he hurried out to tell Molly his discovery. Just a mile and a half away, a, veterinar a veterinarian named Dr. Thompson ran a licensed wildlife rescue center at his home with the help of a few hired workers and his family. He's going to come here to pick up the bird within the next hour, he told Molly. I let him know that my daughter found the bird, and he said he'll bring his kids along to meet you. Molly smiled. Good. I'll finally get to meet some kids here.
Before long, a large white van pulled up. A side door slid open, and Molly was surprised to see children come pouring out of the van like a fountain. She had expected two, maybe three children to arrive with the wildlife rescuer, but certainly not a van full. Two, three, four, five, six. Molly counted in her head. The veterinarian. Oh. The veterinarian and his children walked directly to the shed where Molly's father greeted them. Molly suddenly felt very shy around all the, of these new people. "Hello, I'm Doctor Samson," the man said with a kind and jolly voice. "Welcome to the area. It's wonderful. It's wonderful to have new neighbors." These are my children. The friendly children all smiled and waved warmly. Molly's father introduced himself and his daughter. She thought for a moment that she must be seeing in double, for each of the children had an identical twin. I can tell how these ca- can be told out, even if they are twins, like identical, so identical twins. It's their hairstyle. You find you'll find out later, but you can see this is hairstyle to the right, and this is hairstyle to the left. As far as Molly could tell, each set of twins looked exactly the same. The boys even had matching lizards perched on their shoulders. What are those? Molly asked. They are bearded dragons. One of the boys answered eagerly. May I touch one? Molly asked. Touch her? The the other boy said with a huge grin. You can hold her. Oh <laughs> well, that isn't even a dragon, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's really a lizard, some sort of lizard. Quicker than Molly could say, "No, thank you." The boy lifted the bearded dragon off his shoulder and set it into Molly's hands. Its scaly body and pointed little, and pointy little claws felt very strange. And made Molly nervous at first, but the dragon neither scratched nor clawed nor tried to get away. After a moment, Molly smiled. She likes you, the boy told Molly kindly. You and I are my reptile and amphibian, amphibian experts. Doctor Sampson explained, "They've had quite the assortment of rescue snakes, frogs, lizards, lizards, and turtles at their home." Then he pointed to his youngest twin daughters. Paisley and Poppy love to take care of the animals. We just got a rescued donkey," said either Paisley or Poppy. For Molly didn't know which was which. All right. Can you be a little bit faster? Thanks. 
Her hooves were too long, and she could barely walk when she first came to us. The other twin finished. Tara and Tilly play piano duets all over the state. Dr. Thompson said of the older girls. They're also my bird experts, so they were extra excited to come with me this morning. Molly told Tara and Tilly that the injured bird was inside the shed, in the corner past the shelves and drawer. Either Tara or Tilly unfolded a light blanket that had been tucked under her arm. The other wore huge leather gloves. The twins went into the shed with a blanket opened wide in front of them. One of the twins dropped the blanket gently over the bird. The other knelt down and gently scooped the bird up, facing it away from her body. Body what? Body gently, body with its wings tucked in and its head out of the blanket. The twin holding the bird turned to Molly. Tilly, you found an incredible bird. This is a peregrine falcon. They're the fastest birds in the world. When they swoop down to catch prey, they can go up to 200 miles per hour. Then Tara spoke. This one is a male. You can tell by how much white he has on his breast and also by his size. A female peregrine falcon would be even bigger than he is. Molly, Molly was impressed with their knowledge and also their friendliness. Is he going to be okay? She asked. Dr. Thompson answered, We'll do x-rays and an exam. The goal is to release him into the wild one again one day. Wow. Look at that. That is the falcon. Look at that. Molly and her father chatted with the Thompson family as they walked back to their van. Molly asked to ask to which school they all went to. We homeschool, Leo Arlyle said. We have a really fun class, the other said. In fact, we sh we get to do something really fun on Monday. You should come join us. Yes, you should come. Paisley or Poppy said. Molly noticed then that the two youngest T twins were, mi were missing identical front teeth. What are you going to do on Monday? Molly asked. One of the children suggested they keep it a surprise, and the others all agreed, but they begged Molly to come. Molly asked her dad for permission, which he happily gave. See you on Monday, then. The children called as they piled into the van. Molly smiled and waved as the van, as the van pulled away. It was a wonderful meal feeling to have made some friends in this new town. She wondered as she watched the van rumbled, rumble down the, down the lane what would happen to the peregrine falcon. Then she wondered what the homeschool class would be like next week and why they wanted to keep it a surprise.
um, you know, it's time to go now. I hope we're going to meet again in another video. And please like and subscribe. Bye. Bye. Please like and subscribe.